while the 25 to 30 years were in the struggle in the diaspora collecting monies from asylum seekers the JJCs carried their coffin to the Liberty Square in Bamenda and made the revolution to be what it is today. Welcome to another episode of Voices. My name is Augustine Ambe, and you are Roger Sakin. Uh In this struggle, we have been, uh, especially Voices, has been dealing mostly with with the difficulties that are encountering the people of Ambazonia. We've we've tried really hard to define who the enemies are. We've tried very hard to define what their nature is, what they benefit from from colonizing us, and uh, and and how that and how that affects us and how we can fight back but we really haven't spent a lot of time talking about the internal dynamics of uh, of the struggle within the ambazonian uh, within ambazonia itself and when i talk about internal dynamics i mean within the ambazonians how ambazonians themselves are taking on the enemy uh, and in, in in defining in fact in defining this i, I would uh, i would divide it in two parts because in ambazonia you do have internal ambazonian which means ground zero and then the diaspora and then uh, um, we're going to see how how these two are interacting or not interacting to to help the struggle or to slow down the fight and before i start i'm going to give a little a little background so that we we, we see how these how this divide that i'm talking about came about um obviously the people in Barcelona were supposed to get their independent they did not and since 1961, we've been, we've been fighting. And I, I would like to say that this fighting has mostly been within uh, intellectuals or, or in academia. And the people on the ground were aware of it, but there was no real organization to fight back. And so, uh, partly because of the repression. And so, sp people spoke about the difficulties mostly in, with trusted members and in bedrooms. And or, uh, mostly with trusted members. But when they came out in the diaspora, they were more overt, you know. Uh, Foncha came and spoke. When they insisted on uh, unification without the independence, my protest was that the United Nations was not going to tie the southern Cameroon to the apron, apron string of the, the Republic of Cameroon against the wishes of the people. Gojidinka spoke. The territory which was called West Cameroon, which is which I call Amazonia, is still there. It has no legitimate government. It has no legitimate government. It, it, it doesn't even have a perfect government. Uh, we can go through, including Monzo and some of the other players who are still alive today. Without adding anything, they have destroyed what we had. Under the pretext of resurfacing our roads, which were tarred prior to unification, they dug up the existing tar, destroyed the roads, and in that state abandoned them, as in the case of Kumba Bonge and the Kumba Tombel roads. The southern Cameroon has not changed one inch ever since the British left 50 years ago. To travel 50 kilometers, you have to take it two, three, four days. Uh, it is unacceptable. So they always came to the diaspora, tried to, try to organize the diaspora. But the problem with organizing the diaspora was that the diaspora was always very active. In fact, they were so active that they formed like four, four governments abroad. But that did not touch the ground. Because the ground was under repression. The ground was totally divided. 
uh, there were small groups. Uh, there was a rally like when, like after the SDF, then there was the ASC one, ASC two, and then uh, SNC. All of these started creating some groundswell, but you know, within the repression in the in the belly of the beast, it was it was not very conducive. It was it was not possible to to do any more than grumble and be quiet. But after October, November, or December 2016, when the lawyers took charge or they took uh, the lead. The teachers followed and everybody followed. There was a grand swell. And for the first time, the people of Ambazona rose up big time. And since then, it's been, it's been downhill for the La Republic and cruising with, with the people of uh, Ambazonia. In fact, the name Ambazonia was finally established and we started defining ourselves. And then we started, uh, uh, the consortium was formed. Uh, La Republic arrested the, 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 the leaders. Uh, some escaped abroad and when this took off on the ground the the diaspora was also activated and uh, and somebody who was in the diaspora I'm going to tell you this when the diaspora was activated I was of the opinion that uh, we in the diaspora have tried many many times to get this thing going it did not start since the ground has taken over we should support the ground we should we should allow the leadership in the ground to continue support them those who have escaped we should rally behind them and those who were in jail we should fight to get them out uh but but i think what happened was that uh shortly after the 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 dispersal on the ground groups like morris got got formed i think uh other groups were already in existence agc and uh, and some other ones these groups started taking and I say taking in quote leadership of the struggle abroad, and 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 personally, and I'm speaking at a personal level here. I was not of the opinion that they should be the ones to lead because we tried leading the ground. I did not work. And since there was a ground leadership that has developed, who understands the enemy, who understands the issues on the ground, who understands the terrain more than these people who have been out, some of them for decades and decades, and 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 and, and dream about the place but really don't understand the ground as much. My opinion was that they should let them, uh, uh, we, should, we should play a supporting role and allow the ground to, 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 to continue to lead. Uh, obviously, I, I, I was one voice, but, but what continued, continued. Um, uh, there were the different conclaves that took place in Nigeria. Uh, then there was the governing council and obviously the interim government. Then Siseko was picked up. As far as I'm concerned, that's a quick summary, not in detail, but a summary of the struggle so far. And I'm bringing this topic now because with, uh, in the absence of Siseko, uh, there's, a, there's new leadership that has taken over. And right now, um, I think just a few weeks ago, Roger, you can help me with this. Just a few weeks ago, other groups that are not part of the, the IG that held a conference in Washington, D.C., uh, to promote uh, an alternate agenda from, from the IG, I, I, I believe. I listened to it very carefully, but I really did not get a sense of where they were going. And right now, the talk internationally or the talk abroad in the diaspora is unity, unity, unity. And I'm going to make my, my, my take on that here before I have Roger give an opinion or, or add to it, Roger, or subtract. My opinion is that unity is good. But unity for the sake of unity is not good. And I'm saying that because I've seen in other struggles, like in South Africa, the ANC and the Nkata movement, in Eritrea, my understanding that there were also two groups and they actually had to fight each other and kick one out so that the one that finally won, defeated the enemy and, and brought the independence of Eritrea, took over. So the, the talk right now is of unity. And I'm saying what type of unity are we going to bring? Or what type of unity are we looking for and who is promoting this unity and for what reasons uh, i believe that there should be unity if people are bringing um if 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 the unity is 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 vertical i don't believe in lateral unities rogers well um i think you've given a good summary of uh, how the struggle has evolved and uh, but I, I don't think you've given enough credit to the people on ground zero as far as what was happening to them in the early years, how their participation, because you have to remember that uh, even though people did not 
see what was happening but every october 1st and beyond there was always troop mobilization yes and why was that troop mobilization is because they knew that the uh, dr for pam for ngalang for and all the other people um, who were before him were always trying to do something to keep this struggle alive yes i agree with that yes so the ground even though people were not very glued to it people were not tuning in but that aspect was always there and that is what has kept this struggle alive i think there is actually one of uh, our our extreme video t uh, uh, videos that you have played where one of our heroes was being buried in kumbo and one gentleman came out and articulated some of the the repressive measures that the republic has used in kumbu and other parts of ambazonia for over the years yes the people were not tuned in and some people ask the question what has been the difference this time around well the difference this time around is that we have a tool that has enabled us to connect each of those parts of the territory and that tool is what it is the android it is the smartphone it is the phones that people carry in their hands that has been the change it is not that it brought anything new to the struggle but that has been what has changed the struggle and got people involved and educated people because with the android phone something happened to the students in boya is able to be viewed by people in kambe in sabungari in uh, mwa and in all the other parts of the territory whereas before if Fongalanfo went to Kumbu and was picked up and locked up in Kumbu, nobody knew about it except the few devoted uh, SCNC members. So the Android phone is what has actually enabled the ground to participate in the way that we wanted them to participate. Yeah, I totally agree. That 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 communication was Yes. The communication technology allowed us to communicate with each other. Yes, so and, and people could see the people, what was being done to other people. Like, you know, it wasn't like somebody came and was telling this story and you were that, like, I don't know if this is true or not. You could see the videos and see those things. Yes. So that is exactly how the ground changed. And I hope that uh, we give them that credit. Yes, uh, the struggle, you, you have laid, you laid it out very well. It has morphed, it has evolved. And we had this uh, conference in Maryland where they called it the reboot, the reboot conference. Yes. You know, uh, the, 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 the choice of words is interesting. You know, if you have ever used a computer and, it, and it, the, the, the screen got burnt on you and you wanted to restart it, and then you have to go back and try to, to reboot. But I, I don't know if the struggle ever got to that position where it needed some kind of a reboot. But that is a choice of words uh, that they picked for the conference, and they had a reason for it. We all organized that conference. Maybe you don't know. Bo Herbert did not organize it. We organized the conference. Okay? So Bo Herbert signed it, yes, because he heavily wants to put it out, but Bo Herbert did not take that decision. Dinka's group, Republic of Ambazonia, AGC, SYA, Morris, it was not Bo Herbert's decision. Let me let you know that. I would like to take this opportunity to thank whoever, I don't know who, I know it, it, start, it definitely started with one person's brain, whoever came up with this idea that we should reboot, jumpstart, kickstart, do whatever we have to do to get to Boya. We were expecting that when they go into that conference, we'll see uh, some kind of something different. But I think uh, most of the key speakers, uh, uh, Harriet from uh, Boston, they came, they were really litigating things about Skapak and uh, Skakuf and all that kind of stuff. Instead of saying, okay, uh, this is where the struggle is, this is what we can do, and this is how we can move the struggle forward. But they went and was just going over and over and over things that people have moved on from. Hey, Ambazonia, Ambazo, Ambazozo. Man, you guys are not lively. What's happening? Come on. 
When it is time to take down the dictator, we raise our voices. Because God has a way of hearing lovely voices. Don't keep them inside. My brothers, my sisters, we are at the moment when we need to acknowledge the people who have really done this work. We have hundreds of Ambazonians who are dead, giving their lives for what we hope, what they hope we could achieve. We have thousands who have been disappeared. We have thousands who have been injured. I didn't see what came out of the boot except the acronym ARC that they formed and things that was formed. Uh, I have not heard any other thing. Uh, they, they are not doing anything now. They are talking about more unity. So I think it is a way that people are looking for to become, I don't know to use the word relevant or not, but it is like, well, uh, the struggle is moving at, we, we are no longer in control because the people who went to, to reboot Bo Hubbard, they said uh, they would not accept the interim government or whatever government because there was no election. And then they went in there and they had an election. So I don't know if the people that they voted in there were voted by the people of Ambazonia. They had the internet election and people from Ground Zero had to cast votes to vote that leadership that they now accepted and they are pushing forward. I don't know. So what I'm trying to say is that the same process that they were criticizing is the same process that they went into reboot and adopted. Because I have never seen anywhere in the world where a prime minister or a government would be elected through the, the internet. How are you going to determine who is voting? How are you going to determine who is registered to vote? So, so no, I think, I think that's an advanced question because and I say that because uh, we are not a functioning democracy where you can organize politics and, and, and we're still in a, in a fight. Yes. We're in a revolution. And so, and so talking about elections and things like that, it's, it's, um, I think it's premature. Mm -hmm. And I think from the word reboot, you can tell that reboot assumes, just like you said, is that something was dead or something, nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. And so there's a reboot, mm -hmm. which is a condemnation of the IG because the IG was already going on and it had leadership that was actually arrested and put in jail at the time they were using the word reboot. The reason why we are here is not simply because we want to create an alternative platform or pull our resources together, it's because we reject fraud. And I, I, I request... <laughs> we are here because we think what we have been doing thus far observing people who have arrogated to themselves through violence in the Boko Haram territory, the right of governance to speak for all of us, have failed woefully to listen to the voices of the majority. They've employed violence and all negativity to shut us down. We've watched and hoped to God Almighty that they come to reason and open the doors for us to have meaningful dialogue. We took our patience for granted and they transformed this re re revolution into a punching bag where people have been abused, women abused, men denigrated, our brother Yebo attacked his integrity, robbed into mud, irrespective of what the wife is watching. Everyone has been so much taunted on a daily basis. Before I step on this stage, I was just reading what's up. A message being circulated how Ayaba Cho betrayed uh, uh, Mr. Ayo. <laughs> this is not the kind of revolution we envisage. This is not the kind of society we're looking forward to building. And I invite you to reject it. Reject it with all your heart, all your strength, all the energy you have. And even if the only thing you are going to achieve is to stop this violent minority. Let that go down in our history books, or at least in the footnotes of history, that we oppose and stop Cameroon, and we oppose and stop a domestic threat that was going to rob us of the right to free speech and the right to be able to participate in the governance of our country.
I stayed quiet because I wanted them to do what they want to do so we can understand where they are coming from. Now, this is it. I not go reboot. I not be a part of the reboot. But from the videos I saw on the media that I watched, I did not hear say, I couldn't be more disappointed. There's nothing that says that there should be only one liberation group or that you should agree with the other liberation group. If you think they're being ineffective and you fill the void and you become more effective, I mean, more power to your, to your effort, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, so there's nothing there. I think the only, problem that I, the only problem that I saw with that whole thing is the fact that you have to condemn. Maybe you have to condemn another in order to make yourself relevant. I could have been more disappointed that this is why a group of people that call themselves fathers and mothers of this revolution will gather. I did not believe these were the reasons they gathered themselves. Come to think of it, I saw some people putting up posts like the Della Della's talking about building a stronger defense team. I was expecting that wow factor. I was expecting wow, that stronger defense that has come together to defend the land of Ambazonia. But after reading their communique, I don't know if I'm making a mistake here. I only realized that a group of people have been slamming one diplomatic move, slamming diplomacy, condemning diplomacy, that diplomacy cannot take us to anywhere to go and start another diplomatic move. What sense does it make? As a scapa treasurer, many people around me have come and say, oh, are you the hundred? Are you the hundred? I don't know who has not said it yet, but that's me. Uh, I have this report. It's, you see, it's a lot of files. If I have to go through all of it here, we'll probably sleep here, so I'm going to keep it short. Everything Scapa concerns the IG. You went to the reboot conference. Now you are giving an account of Scapa to SCYM, to AGC, to Moritz. These are people that have never donated. They don't know anything about Scapa. They have their own accounts. They have never accounted to anyone. What I expected from you as a strong woman, as a strong amber woman that stands for truth and transparency, I expected you to round up your speech or whatsoever or accountability reports by saying that as I give an account here today, I expect you all, Pabo, Ayabacho of AGC, SCYA Akwanga, to also bring out your own account and account to the people. Was the, the purpose of the reboot to go and account or to go and talk about the IG, governing council, the before governing council or what? Was that what this reboot was all about? I think what we've established here is that there are definitely two camps that have different ideas about how to pursue the struggle. So who, let me ask you if you know. Who is, who is engineering the, 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 whole, the whole idea of unity? Well, um, actually, I will tell you that it is the people. The people want unity. And some of our potential supporters want unity. But the problem is that when people ask for unity, they don't understand that some of these people, I don't know if they have anything to offer except the fact that they have a microphone, they have a phone, they have a, an app on that phone where they can turn it on and make a lot of noise and put it out there and then people keep sharing because there, there is one other thing that is bothering us in this revolution and it is that aspect to share. People just share things without even asking if this thing is worth sharing. Before you go there though, because that, you, you, you said something which is very, very key. And I wrote it down because that was that was what I was driving. Uh, and you you said uh, um, um, you unity. So I wrote I wrote my unity for what purpose? Because if if you and I disagree, right? Mm -hmm. And there's always bound to disagreement when you have two people because they may be coming from different perspective or from different experiences or for, for whatever creates a difference creates a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but they, they, they need to be, they need to be a, a reason why you and I need to work together. Mm -hmm. For example, if I'm going to establish a business and I need more money, I have some money to add to mine, mm -hmm. they will form a partnership. Correct. Okay? Or if I'm forming a, a, a technology company and, and, and I am a good technologist and you're a good manager, 
I can say I'll create these products and you go sell them. Mm-hmm. And that's why I use the word vertical mm-hmm. unity, uh, meaning vertical integration. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, so, so I, and I'm saying this not only to whoever is pushing it, but including the people on the ground. Because if you, if you do not find for what purpose people should come together, then, but you bring people who have different ideas to come together, all you're doing is creating more quarrel in the house and, and more bickering. Mm-hmm. So do you see any reason why people should come together in that struggle? And I'm saying that because it seems to me that the level of our technology, if we have any technology in the struggle, is the same. It's not like, it's not like you have a, a small gun, I have a big gun, and I need big guns, so I need to bring you, or I have big guns and you have small guns, and then like, we need small guns, so come and join us with a small gun. Is there, is there a need for unity within the community right now? Well, yeah, there, there is always need for unity. You can, you can never... Um... When I say unity, I mean unity of groups that... Because those who already agree are together, either in the IG or in the reboot camp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. So if these people who are disagreeing are saying, let's come together, now it, what, what is bringing them together? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't know because, and, and you are very right to ask that question, I don't know what is bringing them together because you know that one of the main problems that Morris, for example, had with uh, Skakuf and any other group that has come up is that the, the leaders of those organizations, according to Morris, were not choosing the right way. There was no election. So according to Morris, Morris had this calendar where they, they, they had to organize an election and all of us have said it is not possible. So I don't know whether... Uh, and then Morris found some, uh, some uh, alliances with uh, AGC and you know AGC was, uh, was skilled before. Mm-hmm. So they had fallen apart along the lines then they found they found some unity with agc with skill with the republic of ambazonia because apparently these are people who said they were not happy with the system or how skakuf came to exist so all of a sudden they found themselves in alliance why because they had a common enemy in skakuf or the governing council or then now the interim government Mm-hmm. So their unity that they have within them, and that is how they came to reboot, because it is from these groups that I just named, mm-hmm. that is how they came to be the reboot people. Mm-hmm. The reason was that their, their common denominator was the simple fact that they did not agree with how the governing council was Kakuf, the then governing council, and then the interim government was formed. So their common denominator was opposition to this group. Mm-hmm. So it is not like there was anything between them because SCYL does not agree with AGC. That is why there are two different groups. Mm-hmm. And the Republic of Ambazonia has a different approach from what Morris had. Morris had a road, roadmap which is different from what these other groups have. So the only common thing between them is opposition to this interim government and nothing else. This trouble is about eight million and more people. It is not about you, Ayabacho. It is not about you, Bohabe. It is not about you, Akwanga. It is not about me. It is not even about Siseku. It is not even about Dr. Common Sense. It is not about the acting president, Ikomesako. It is not about him. It is about me and you and the rest of the eight million Ambazonians. So don't make it your private property. Don't act like if it is not you, no one should lead. What is it with leadership? What is it? What is eating us up? It's like some of us don't have, we don't want to do anything. Our everything focuses on this struggle. Our, our source of income, our everything, paying our bills, taking care of our innermost responsibilities, focuses on this struggle. So if it does not go our way, we better destroy it for the rest of the people. No, be we be the problem. The problem now we now we one force we for line up behind a Johnny just come will be so disrespectful to us. He thinks say he go use you now for force we for for stand for your back. That's not going to work. L- let me let me ask you this. Um, was there a conference that just held to bring them together? Well, the the idea for coming together stemmed from 
uh, the fourth conclave, when they said the, the process under which they were invited, because you remember before they, the, the conference held, there was a lot of noise. You mean the one in Nigeria? The one in Nigeria. Yes. People said they were invited on a separate day and some people were invited in a separate day and all of that. So from that, they left, never attended that conference and resolved to meet somewhere for uh, a unity conference. So they were supposed to meet in South Africa. It never ha happened. Then I think they moved it to Washington, D.C. And then I think their excuse they didn't hold in January was that Seseko was arrested or something like that. Then they finally got to reboot. And so they went into reboot. So th that's, that's the history of it. But the questions that you are asking is that what brings them to what? Yeah, after what I heard during the reboot and, what, and, the, and, and, and the talk that I heard after the fourth conclave, I didn't see these two coming together. Mm -hmm. Because part of, part, of the, part of the disagreement is they have spite. Mm -hmm. Despite the, 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 some, some have said, and, and, and the, the, there's nothing hidden here. Some have said that they have been in the struggle for a long time, and they don't want to uh, give up the struggle for for newcomers. Mm -hmm. And the newcomers they talk about is Seseko and some of the other people who are who are actually taking leadership of the IG. We are saying that you cannot create unity by trying to impose an individual, a non-starter, somebody who came from somewhere into this struggle to lead us. You cannot do that. That is what we are saying. You cannot impose. Not individuals who don't know anything about the struggle will go and make that decision and they want to come and force us to line behind that person. It's not going to work. That is what I'm telling you. Uh, this is, see, this is something that I have asked uh, a couple of people, you know, my friends in the struggle who are uh, in the AGC camp because when people have talked about unity, Mm -hmm. So my question to them is that, okay, we have the, the interim government and probably we have agency and I, I, I will pick agency because I know that agency had a governing structure. So when you talk about that unity, is somebody going to dissolve? Because I know Soseko had invited uh, the leader of AGC to come and join the interim government mm -hmm. and he was uh, he was rebooked you know he wrote back to him and published a letter I think Seseko wrote a private letter to him and he wrote back and published the letter Seseko did the same thing to Bo Herbert of Morris and he wrote back so I think so these people refused to join the government of Seseko, the interim government, because they did not believe in it or because they had their parallel organizations or structures that they did not want to uh, uh, bring on the, the, the interim government. Yes, and that's why I'm asking you, who called the meeting of the, who called this unity meeting? Because whoever called this unity meeting and whoever is accepting to merge, like you, like you rightly say, the two cannot you cannot have an agc and an ig functioning together i mean are they forming a coalition or is the ig dissolving itself to form a i mean and and for what reason those are some of the things that i want to know well uh i don't know who is organizing it maybe uh there is the new sheriff in town which is the assistant interim president who is trying to do things uh, differently i don't know but the fact of the matter is that uh, people have been clamoring for this unity and you, you have rightly said unity for what because you need to understand exactly if because if we don't have the same philosophy if we don't have the same approach what is the purpose of coming together or if you don't have something that comes and complement what i'm doing yes then 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 bringing you in only increases the noise in my in my in my meetings and a distraction and a distraction because I just brought people who have nothing else to add. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They bring nothing else to add, and so it only increases the noise. And then that starts making me question the focus of the person who actually accepts. Because if I'm, if I have a very, if I have a thriving business, right, mm -hmm. and you come and you don't, you're not bringing anything to to increase my speed or increase my my my, my robustness in my business, I will not accept you. Mm -hmm. 
because you're coming down to to water down my shares mm -hmm. or you're coming to to just be another voice that like you like you like is a distraction mm -hmm. you understand yeah so so i worry that those if it, I, do you let me ask you this do you think the ig the, the, the ig is agreeing with this uh with this well you, you mentioned the the interim president as being a possible motivator for this too right I don't see I don't have a handle on it mm -hmm. all what I'm saying is uh, it's speculation and uh, the fact of the matter is that that is what people have been asking people have been asking for unity whatever thing whatever they mean by that unity I don't know but the for what we know from public pronouncements which you had referenced before there are some of these people who have said they are never going to accept to work under any person. So what it is, is it is either them or nobody else. So if anybody is engaging in this, I think that is something that they need to know. And I have not seen any public uh, renunciation or denunciation of that particular position that those people took okay let me I, i'm going to say this okay and i'm one of those people who um who when you assume the position of leadership it means that you're opening yourself to to um to 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 you you're actually offering yourself to to, to do more research to do to do more work and have more information and 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 to and to know more than the public okay mm -hmm. so so if i if i if i if i am the leader and i know more i know you even more than the public know you right mm -hmm. if the public is clamoring for me to join with you and work i i, I, I mean that voice is not going to make sense to me you understand mm -hmm. because the the, the least or the most, the most I can do is to go to, go out to the public and say, "Hey, look, Roger has a right to be his own person, and and we have a right to keep doing what we're doing. Let them keep doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay? There is no need for us to come together because really, there's there's nothing that we bring. We have what what we see among ourselves is already a difference. Our level of technology is unless unless somebody say, "Hey, I have a battalion of army. Uh, 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 let's let's now start focusing down to our struggle." Unless somebody say, I have a battalion of army, if I bring this battalion of army and you bring whatever you have, then we can, we can more effectively defeat our enemy. Is that, is, 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 is that the case? No, I don't think so. Well, and uh, let's, let's take just what you just laid out and put it in what uh, we call leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. Because part of uh, the leadership qualities uh, is decision making and capability yes. which is what you are talking about so we have some form of leadership now that is probably lacking in that aspect decision making and capabilities so what you are describing is okay if you are the leader and uh, people are clamoring for this and you have to make that decision so you have to look at all what you just described and either go to your people and say look i know that this is what you people really want. But this is our reality. That is where good leadership comes in. This is our reality. You look at everything, you look at the big picture, and then you come out and you paint that picture for your people. Like, yes, you people want unity, you want this, you want that, but this is our reality in this current revolution. The people that you are asking that I should unite with them, this is where they stand. This is their approach to things. This is how they view things. This is how they are doing things. And I can give you an example. Uh, after uh, October 1st, or September 22nd, I believe, mm -hmm. when people were killed, you saw the video of one of the uh, frontline members. Who, whose video? Uh, the leader of AGC. When he came out, when people were mourning, when people were crying for how La Republic had slaughtered our people. 
You saw the presentation that he did. My fellow Ambalanders, the past few days have been extremely debilitating. They have been mind-boggling. I lack words to quantify the pain and anguish that runs through the vein of each Ambalanda. I have just watched with horror pictures of the death, the massacre. How did we get here? Ambalanders, how did we reverse the gains we have made for the past 10 months, for the past 20 years? To this point, we will find the corpse of our people littered on the street. How did we get here? No Ambazonian got us here. No Ambazonian is responsible for the murders of Ambazonians in the streets of Ambazonia on October 1, 2017. The British, the United Nations and France got Ambazonians to where they find themselves today. The British handed the sovereignty of the people of Ambazonia to the French in 1961 and the French acknowledged that by the words of Charles de Gaulle, the then president of France, who said Southern Cameroons was a little gift from the Queen of England to the French. Today France uses the troops of her colony, La Republique du Cameroon, to run their little gift for them and that is who is responsible for the murders of Ambazonians, not anyone else. We allow the mob to run this resistance. We allow inexperienced, power drunk individuals with an agenda to run the resistance. This is how we got here. No, it was simpler than that. Ambazonians were simply celebrating their Independence Day with peace leaves in their hands and terrorist forces from La Republic of Cameroon hiding in foxholes and flying in helicopter gunships, gunned them down without any provocations and without any warning. It took the marchers totally unawares. How did we get here? How did we get here? Last Monday, in something that has become way too often in our land, the people of Ambazonia were once again reminded of the absolute horror under which we live in the land of our birth. Lives were taken senselessly in brutish fashion by an army of occupation that view our people as lambs to be slaughtered. Of course, they view us as lambs because for more than 56 years, they have brought horror and terror to our land and been able to go back to their homeland with praise and the loot they have stolen from our people. Enough. Enough. The right to self-defense is as instinctive to a human being as the air we breathe. No people, no nation can unilaterally disarm, especially in the face of an occupation whose brutality and impunity causes the streets of our towns and villages to be soaked with the blood of innocence. In a moment, I will be signing an order authorizing the Ambazonian Defense Force to begin the great and noble task of protest, protecting our defenseless people and freeing our land from this long nightmare that is our occupation by La Republic to Cameroon.
in doing this, let me paraphrase, in doing this, we declare our right on this earth to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to secure the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring using every means at our disposal. May God bless our men and women now on the march in the field. May he bless our land, Ambazonia. Thank you. Be careful the things you do in this revolution because it might hurt you and your generation. Old men and women that do not want to be role mothers to their younger ones. Shame on you all. What does this person bring to the table? Is he just opposition? to what I, uh, this group or this group stands for, or there is really something to contribute. Going forward, you've got a choice to make. To back us or to back down. To back us or to back down. Adi. May God bless our men and women now on the march in the field. We are not doing a popularity contest here. There are times that people might be clamoring for things that are not the right things that will move the struggle forward. Yes, and so our public really needs to be educated about, about this unity. Because I, and, I'm, and I'm honest with you because I, I, I know the IG and I know these other groups. First of all, if you look at Morris, Morris came saying that they are a secretariat of SCYL, Ambazonia, uh, and all the other groups, right? Mm -hmm. And how, how come now Morris has become a liberation movement of its own? Is it a new movement like uh, SCNC? Or, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? You see where all these things get confused, and, and which is... Which is I, I, which I, I there was a point I call these movements as movements that hijacked what happened on the ground, mm -hmm. and it hasn't helped because what happened was that when these groups, when the diaspora let, stood up and said, "Hey, we're going to take over the struggle now," and all these people dusted themselves from thirty something they've been in the struggle for thirty years. And those who have not been in the struggle for one year, for example, and I've been in the struggle for a while, and I'm not saying this, I, when I say this, I don't mean some people have not been in the struggle. I have never known that Bo Herbert was part of the, of the liberation of the Southern Cameroon until I saw a video where he, where he appeared as the leader of Morisk. Hello, Southern Cameroonians. My name is Ntumfoing, Bo Herbert, and I'm coming to you all the way from Washington. I'm bringing you revolutionary greetings from our people in the diaspora in the United States of America. And I'm coming to you to thank you, people of Southern Cameroons, for what you're doing now to make sure that our people are returned to serve rule, for what you're doing to conquer colonialism from Yaoundé. My reaction to that was, really, you know what I'm saying? And so for these people, either old or new, Forgetting about our own history in trying to ignite the ground and not being able to do that, and then go and then, because what we did abroad was to challenge the leadership that had succeeded on the ground to create the mayhem that the Republic, for the first time, was responding to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so what did was it confused the people in the diaspora. People funded a lot of money in reaction to what was happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. They funded a lot of money to Morisk. Morris, you've been collecting money. You had an all um, United Front meeting when you, want to, you wanted to fund Morris. Where did all that money go to? Where have you kept it? Where? Why did you keep all those monies? Where? Agency, hey, you've been collecting money forever. How many people have you accounted to? Is anyone above accountability? SCYA, where have you kept? Where, where, where are all these monies? Do Amazonians not deserve to know where their monies have been going to? Why only the IG? Where did the IG go wrong? 
you've heard you've heard, i mean I, I i don't want to go into some of the debasements that have that have come with 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 what happened to the money but you can see that there was no connection between the leadership abroad with the movements on the ground mm -hmm. and and i think that has affected our struggle in a negative way and so and so when you start looking at it you you start seeing why the ig which still had ground connections with the group that actually emerged to be a leader in the struggle would you say yeah well and uh it is important for us at this point to draw a distinction between the ig and the frontline movements because they are not on the same uh, pedestal no they're not yes because the ig to my understanding is a government of the people and these other movements are movements so there is a difference and people need to know that difference but somehow people in their minds and all the the bombastic videos that have been circulating around and audios and stuff like that have always tended to calibrate the ig and all these other groups on the same uh, caliber i am not good enough to be just a fighter okay if you like ayuk too much go and tell ayuk that you should come and follow me that let him lie behind me ayaba and others let's finish the job we will not line up behind him forget about that for you to write to me that that is why he needs fight, fighters like me you have reduced me to what a vanguard so you really sit there look at me very well my brother that ayok julius Tabe will give me orders me 32 years in this struggle you go pick a income pop and you from somewhere to come and give me a kwanga orders you, you you guys are not serious you guys don't go pick somebody to impose on us for god's sake so you guys are thinking you can impose Julius Tabe on me? I don't work for Julius. Neither do I work for anybody with his surrogate. You've got a choice to make. Leadership is all in a revolution. You need a leader. And you haven't got one in the package that you've presented to Ambazonians. You've tried to destroy the real leaders of this revolution. You've tried to undermine the real leaders of this revolution. You've undermined the actors who understand the pathway to our freedom. Because you were already in governance mode. You were already in Boya building prisons for all the patriots who've suffered tribulations for years, fighting an archaic system. When most of you who parade yourself as leaders still believe in the one Cameroon. That's how we got here. The IG have tended to listen to that and therefore start talking about this unity stuff. Yes, and, and, and uh, you, you, you're, you're very right. And uh, I think that that's the problem. While the 35 to 25 to 30 years were in this revolution, in the diaspora, asking La Republic government to pay them compensations for jailing them, the JJCs were there strategizing on how to mobilize the masses, on how to make the masses to understand the plight of the Southern Cameroonians. While the 25 to 30 years were in the struggle, in the diaspora, collecting monies from asylee seekers, the JJCs carried their coffin to the Liberty Square in Bamenda and made the revolution to be what it is today. I, I, I have always told you that I believe that the ground is the that is the all and be all in this struggle. And all of us out here, all of us in the diaspora are supposed to play a supporting role. While the JJCs were they strategizing on how they can raise funds to move the revolution forward, coming up with strategies like my trip to Boya, the 25 to 30 years are there talking on how they can commission the monies into groups, on how they are going to share the monies. I don't know if we are working for this revolution for commissions 
or for monies to be shared into groups or for us to free homeland. It is so sad that the so-called 25 to 30 years went ahead to vote or elect a JJC again to become the chair lady of their commission. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, I have this question for you. If you were in my school of thought, if you were in my class, who will you choose among these two? Is it the JJCs or the 25 to 30 years? We are in this revolution to free our homeland. Even if it is a kid of one year old, a kid of five years old, a kid of ten years old, that takes us to Boya, I pay my allegiance to that kid. But instead, what we have done is that we have sat here and because of our differences in approach, we have been fighting against each other, calling each other names, demeaning each other, undermining each other, and... And I'm posturing. I'm well, posturing. The reason I'm saying posturing is because while all of what you're saying is going on, there's work for the Ambazonian people which is not being done. Correct. I'm going to point out some of the work that is not being, that is not being done. Since Seseko was arrested, right, mm -hmm. there were some movements within weeks where Chris Anno went to Nigeria, where they talked about hiring lawyers, and then everything went silent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about anything else. And I'm saying everything went silent and that there's more to be done. We should have been going on because the, the folks in South Africa last week engaged the Nigerian embassy. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because when these things happen, you don't only fight them legally or through the press. You actually engage, you, define, you decide who, who is causing you these problems and you attack them politically, you attack them in every way you can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of the ANC. Because when we were in college here in the, in the 80s and 90s, what happened was the, the government of, uh, the, the American government was not talking to the ANC. Mm -hmm. They had defined them as terrorists. Mm -hmm. But what did the, the ANC do? The ANC used to bypass the American government and come to our university yes. campuses. And they would come sometimes and there were only two people and they rolled their entire program. Guess what? After four, five, six years, all these kids who they were teaching came out of university and they, they were in corporate now. And guess what happened? They ran the campaign that drove that ended apartheid and so what i'm saying is that and i'm going to really lay this on the doorstep of the ig because there will be always fringe groups talking left and right trying to get attention okay mm -hmm. but what but what i expect us to be doing is or the ig to be doing is mobilizing us to campaign against nigeria because nigeria is the one that violated international laws la republic is known for for, for, for its lawlessness and its bribery, okay? So you expect them to bribe uh, uh, whatever they can get away with. It's Nigeria who violated laws, who, 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 who committed international uh, violations, mm -hmm. okay? And it is the place of the IG to, to mobilize the people of Ambazonia abroad. And there are many, many people abroad who can do these things. Mm -hmm. I looked at what the South Africans did and I'm like, that is what should have been taking place in every capital, in front of every Nigerian embassy. Mm -hmm. Because I've always said that Nigeria told La Republic to claim that they have the people so that the, the campaigns that were going on at their embassies should stop. Mm -hmm. You can see how the Nigerians are worried whenever there's a campaign against their, their embassy. Because Nigeria committed some serious international uh, violations, which if we highlight, if we highlight and keep on the Nigeria will tell us where our where our leaders are and probably even freedom. We are not criminals. We are not terrorists as they have called us terrorists. We are fighting for freedom. Freedom is a human right. It's not something that they have to take away. We are fighting for it the way they fought here in Germany and that is what we are doing. Now, Southern Cameroon will be free. Ambazonia will be free. Yeah. Ambazonia will be free. Yeah. What I'm praying is this. I am praying so hard that wherever you are, Mr. Tassan, because I believe you are still alive. I want you to open your eyes 
and been watching and listening very carefully, listening keenly to the same people you trusted. The same people. Her red for move, not right for Muki, they call her. And let's be under and, and the rest. The same people you trusted. Is this the best they can offer to you right now that you need them to go and plan, sit and plan, conspire on how to throw away the same government you have been fighting to build? Siseku Ayoktabe, I believe wherever you are, you should be able to see these things that the same people you trusted, the same people you told me, Kuku, Kuku, I am the president and I cannot shut down on people. Yes, sir, I respected you for that. But sometimes, sometimes we need to shut down certain people for our lives to go to another height.